How do you know when the Ike Expressway is backed up? Ah, very good question. Question, uh, the question always comes up in our emergency department, and we know at Loyola when the Eisenhower is uh, extremely busy because the heroin overdoses end up at Loyola. Um, when the Eisenhower is moving freely, the suburban kids end up, and my colleagues out at Good Samaritan Hospital and Hinsdale Hospital, I've talked with them repeatedly about this problem. But when the, everybody goes on to purchase their heroin, they all get excited and they tend to score it prior to uh, uh, getting out of the city. And when the Eisenhower is busy, it's around the time of First Avenue and Harlem Avenue that they stop breathing and uh, the ambulances have to be called and we reverse it in the, the department when we're lucky. That's interesting, I had no idea. Um, how do I know when my friends have so much to drink that they need to go to the hospital? That would be a doctor question. Very good question. Um, if, if your friends are young, um, underage, um, and they are so intoxicated that uh, they are passing out or not able to function, not able to stand up, they're falling, um, you need to get them to the hospital. And, and I understand that there may be ramifications from their parents, but uh, the issue becomes, number one, their ability to metabolize that alcohol is greatly diminished as a kid. And they go into severe metabolic issues, not just related to alcohol. Two, uh, their airways can obstruct uh, they can get so depressed, respiratory depression, that they stop breathing, and that causes uh, irritability with their heart, and they go into dysrhythmias. And three, one of the biggest issues is that they will tend to throw up. And if you tend to throw up and you're not able to manage your own airway, you will inhale your vomit and you will suffocate to death. So if your friend is that intoxicated ever, that uh, they are not able to answer you that they're passing out, they're dozing in and out. Uh, they need to be brought to the hospital. You need to call 911 because they are beyond what you should be caring for or even worried about. You need to get adult professional help for that child at that time. Don't screw around with that. And if I can add, add on to that, um, what happens oftentimes is that your friend has stopped drinking 15, 20 minutes before they're leaving the house or leaving the party. Their blood alcohol content is still increasing. The next hour is really dangerous. They may be a, a semi alert or slurring a little bit, but by the time they get home and they're home alone, they may be going into respiratory failure. Their parents need to know if you're dropping them at home, you can't say just go sleep it off. It could be increasing, and we have had a lot of alcohol overdoses that if parents have checked on their kid an hour, two hours after they've been home, and they can't wake them. So just know that, that if they're continuing drinking up until a little bit before they leave the party, that their blood alcohol level is still going to be increasing. Thank you. Um, what about getting high off of a Sharpie or an Expo? It's, uh, these are in inhalants. Um, they, they tend to be mostly used by younger people, junior high level, older elementary school because they're cheap and available. They do create a high, but they're very dangerous. They can cause poisoning of the bone marrow, result in um, a severe anemia. Um, they can cause other toxic injuries. And uh, we don't want to encourage that, obviously. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like the concept of huffing, uh, spray paints, uh, toluene overdoses, toluene poisoning. Uh, the long-term metabolic effect on the brain is uh, uh, tied in with the schizophrenia, early dementia, uh, being senile, uh, not being able to uh, uh, function in, uh, cognitively to think, to progress on in school. This is a, a 
a question for the police officer. If the host of the party calls 911 because they found illegal drugs, do they get in trouble? No, not under the, the new social hosting ordinance. If, if they call us before we are contacted, that there is a, an exception in the ordinance that allows for them to call the police to assist them. So if they have a couple of friends over and it turns into a problem and they call us before we discover it, now they can't say, well, I was gonna call you when we're walking in the door, mm -hmm. but if they call us before you dialing yeah. while you're walking in. Yeah, they, there is an exception, it's written into the ordinance. And that I presume it's to encourage kids yeah. to have that opportunity. That's correct to help themselves. Sometimes it, situations get out of control. You know, mm -hmm. parents leave their younger children behind, they're old enough to stay home. But uh, as I said, in the days of social media, how long does it take to text 100 of your friends? Mm -hmm. Really, it, it, it doesn't take long at all. And then it gets out of control. Honesty is a good policy, right? Yes. Okay, here's a question for the high school. What are the drug alcohol prevention programs here at the high school besides Snowball? I know you've talked about a few of them, Jeremiah, but just concisely or? SAD. SAD is doing an incredible job um, putting stuff together for um, pre-prom. We have um, information, whenever new drug and alcohol information comes out, I do get it out to the community at large. Um, we have Red Ribbon Week. Um, and we have kids constantly, we have the kids that are in sobriety. We also have a closed AA meeting here at the school that we do not advertise for kids to attend that are in recovery. Um, we could have better um, prevention efforts, but we don't because of the one, one person. Um, and it's splitting time between intervention and prevention. My time has mainly been, been on intervention versus prevention here at the school. Uh, if I could add a, a, a resource for the high school but doesn't take place at the high school is the Face It program which is used as an alternative to suspension um, uh, model in that where uh, if someone gets suspended for five days out or ten days out, they can literally like, trade off by agreeing to do uh, five sessions, eight sessions, up to twelve sessions of uh, uh, this education and prevention program where parent and child together uh, go and attend the program and uh, that program is happening, it's in its fourth week and it's happening, it was happening earlier tonight uh, over another location. The segue into that would be this follow-up question, what plans does a high school have for hiring your replacement? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's a we, question for we you. We are in discussions right now with the administration um, talking about uh, having more of a prevention focus. Um, as Margot alluded to, actually she just directly said it, um, she was only one person, and she uh, focused mainly on intervention, and we're going to try to focus mainly on prevention in the future. That students in their class here come to class after lunch and are obviously under the influence, but the teacher has not reported it or has ignored it. Why? So this is sort of a reporting question. Um, teachers are expected to report. I can say from conversations that I have had with teachers that sometimes they are not sure. We encourage them to err on the side of caution and report anyway, but I think that's something that we can improve upon. Um, there are many kids that are suspected that are sent down that, that are determined not to be under the influence. And so we, we always hear that all the time. Well, many kids are coming to class high all the time, but you know, what one person considers, you know, a behavior that indicates that someone is high, it's, it's still subjective. And so um, teachers are expected to report. Sometimes they're not sure and so they don't, mm -hmm. but we encourage them to do so. Okay, a final question. How are drug tests administered to athletes thought to be under the influence? during a school-sponsored athletic event? Why is it not administered at or immediately following the event? Are the athletes aware that drug testing is a possibility? I'll try to answer that. That's not directly my area, but it is done by the um, I, IHSA, thank you. It is random testing done where they come into the schools to perform the testing. Oh. It is not done by the school. 
And that's the only drug testing we have, right? In terms of random drug, drug testing. We have tests for reasonably suspected students that are administered by the deans. It's not random.